Okay, so if you guys didn't know this about me already, I'm far from a natural pilot in this game. Now sure, I can keep the aircraft away from most of the trees in the game unless I'm on Hossen, and I can win air battles if the enemy pilot has the situational awareness of a wet towel. But I'm still not a great pilot by any stretch of the imagination. My namesake is somewhat accurate here guys. So, getting enough experience under my belt to talk about the dervish has been a tricky process, but I think we're finally there. G'day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today guys, we're going to be talking about the dervish empire specific fighter available to NS operatives. Okay, so this video guys, much like the Chimera video, is not going to be a fully fledged guide about the vehicle from top to bottom. Now while yes, I've had a good amount of time in the Dervish, and yes, as far as I'm aware, the aircraft is considered to be in its final form per se, I just don't have enough experience in the general air game of Planetside 2 to be an authority on how this aircraft should be flown alone. It's quite simple guys, a guide coming from someone like me, who spends the majority of their time in an ESF air to grounding like an absolute moron, and can hardly win a 1v1 dog fight against half of the skilled ESF players in this game, it simply has no merit, no authority at least, and I wouldn't feel comfortable speaking from a position of authority based on my own experience. However, I have had the pleasure of flying and gunning for some incredibly skilled pilots during this process, namely Nikom, who I believe was the first player in the game to Arax in the ZAT top mounted weapon for the dervish. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me. But the point is guys, everything that we're going to be talking about in this video essentially comes from the learning experience that I've had flying with more experienced players like Nikon. So a big thanks goes out to him in particular for helping me through this video and learn more about the dervish and how it should be flown. So without further ado, let's get into talking about what the dervish is, its strengths, its weaknesses, so that you guys have the head start on the learning process that I unfortunately didn't have when I first jumped into the dervish. But firstly, a quick overview as to what the Dervish actually is and how it works. This is a two-seater fighter aircraft that sports a pilot seat that operates a front-facing nose cannon alongside a top-mounted secondary gunner that has a full 360-degree field of view above the aircraft. There's no denying that right out of the gate, this thing kicks out a ton of firepower when both gunner and pilot are trained on the same target. And the aircraft also has the unique opportunity to retreat away from an engagement and still return fire via the gunner position. No other Empire specific fighter in the game can do that, and it's something you should always try to take advantage of wherever you can in dire situations. But above all else, there is probably one thing you'll notice right out of the gate with this thing, and that is that it looks like a giant dinner plate, because, well, it is. It's huge, it's flat, which means that yes, given the right angle, this is the ESF with the largest profile and is therefore by default the easiest ESF to hit in the game. Sky guards will eat this thing for breakfast if they get close enough, and any aircraft that ambushes you from above or below is going to have the easiest time hitting your absolutely giant profile. My Vanguard AP cannon in particular has been having an absolute blast of a time knocking these sky pinatas out of the sky if they happen to give me such an inviting angle. You need to be very aware of your immediate threats when flying the dervish and have a gunner that is always maintaining an understanding of what the hell is happening around you. Which kind of leads us on to the first big thing we need to talk about here guys. Above all else, you can forget flying this thing solo and expecting to do an overly good job. Just forget it. Get a friend, because solo pilots are not going to have a fun time here with the dervish. And that's not necessarily thanks to a lack of firepower coming from the primary weapons. I mean, the DPS that comes out of the DV-21 Lotus, which is basically the rotary cannon available to the dervish, sits in at a whopping 2618 DPS, which is 118 damage per second higher than the scythe and mosquito rotary cannons. The standard DV-22 Raycaster also sits right down the middle of the DPS game in the default nose gun category, only falling short of the Reaver and being what you could call effectively equivalent to that of the scythe. Now throw in the additional DPS that comes from the top gun and you've got a seriously competitive aircraft in the skies from the perspective of damage. Doubly so if you have a very efficient gunner operating the DV Zat, which is essentially a Sky Halberd. I promise you, this is an excellent and very satisfying weapon to use if you can aim properly and get your leading right. But I digress. The firepower isn't the problem. It's the mobility to an extent. The Dervish is big, and as a result, it's a little sluggish. And without a second gunner on board, it can be incredibly easy to outmaneuver the pilot's nose gun. 
While the Dervish can sit in a VTOL hover mode per se, and it can do so quite stably, it cannot use its afterburners to gain a burst of vertical thrust in a dogfight, which means that if you do find yourself in a 1v1 battle against an ESF, the opponent can and will attempt to quickly dance circles around you to keep your nose cannon off target. While the Dervish's yaw is incredibly fast, even with the precision airframe on board, its pitch and roll controls, by comparison to other aircraft, is incredibly sluggish, which means that you're going to be putting in a lot of work to track said targets with that nose cannon. Now to counter this, I've turned up the sensitivity of my flight controls beyond belief, which is something I've never had to do for any other air vehicle in the game. It did help a little bit, but it does come at the cost of making minute changes a little harder to do. So do take that with a grain of salt. But even after you make those sensitivity changes, the aircraft is still going to fall behind the maneuverability of other ESFs should they be given an opportunity to get into a 1v1 dogfight against you. So to loop back a bit to our original point, Having that secondary gunner is so important because it means you can remain competitive even when repositioning the front gun as such, as long as you can keep the enemy target within the top gun's firing arc. The Dervish by nature, when it comes to raw firepower alone, is better than any other ESF in the game, especially when both guns are focusing down the target at the same time. Hell, it can easily knock out bigger threats like Liberators and Galaxies should you be given the proper opportunity. It's just a matter of the two crew members working together and communicating to make the most of that firepower. But because this level of firepower comes with such a reliance on teamwork, I'll argue that it features an arguably higher skill floor to that of your other ESFs, but at the same time, a higher skill ceiling as well. Allow me to explain. Getting into the Dervish is harder because as a pilot you have to worry about your top gunner's angles and giving them the cleanest line of fire all the while working out how to most efficiently dogfight and evade incoming fire as needed. But as a gunner, you need to work out how to counteract and lead hostile targets movements all the while the pilot is making those said evasive maneuvers. Both roles can get good exclusively of one another, but true mastery only comes if you maintain a real solid level of communication between each other and start finding that rhythm. And when you do find that rhythm, this thing is not just a beast only in size, but also its ability to dominate the skies. So with that in mind, how should you be engaging your targets with the Dervish to reach that sweet, sweet feeling of domination? Well, the biggest thing you can do here is take engagements that are on your own terms and avoid losing the numbers advantage that you have inherently with this vehicle wherever possible. Isolating targets and exploiting the fact that you have an extra set of eyes and barrels on your target by comparison to what that very target has on you. Engagements in the Dervish need to be on your own terms and you need to ensure that when you go in for an engagement you are considering the other threats that are around before committing. Remember, if you overcommit, you're a big, hulking, bulky target that struggles in the evasion department. You are without a doubt going to draw the attention of passerbyers and if another aircraft, a sky guard or whatever decides to take a bite out of you, it's going to become incredibly difficult to counter that new threat all the while remaining competitive in your original engagement. With all the other ESFs in the game, you can reverse maneuver and fly erratically to evade third party shots, all the while focusing on your current target. The Dervish doesn't have that luxury thanks to its size and maneuverability. It's very much an opportunistic hunter above all else, and it should be treated as such. Which means that as a result, running the vehicle stealth option on this aircraft is an absolute must in my opinion. It gives you a much better chance at sneaking up on opponent aircraft and play that opportunistic role that it excels at doing so. The Dervish is so big that if you give enemy aircraft a warning that you're coming, it just places the advantage a little bit further in their favor regardless, and it gives them an opportunity to try and sneak up on you, especially if they're running stealth. It's kind of ironic because this aircraft sort of operates like a glass cannon, but not in the traditional meaning you would expect. Like, most glass cannons in other games sacrifice health, for mobility and firepower. But in the case of the Dervish, yeah sure, it is a glass cannon in the sense that it hits like a truck and it needs to fall back to analyze the battlefield to isolate its next target because it simply can't hold its own in the chaos, but that's not because it's weaker from a health perspective. With a 3500 health pool, it's not exactly quote unquote glass by any stretch of the imagination, in fact it's got the most amount of health out of all the ESFs in the game. It just struggles on the mobility front which means that it itself can be isolated easily amongst the chaos should the opportunity present itself. It's just too big a target for that kind of chaotic, almost brawler-like gameplay. So learning how to isolate a target, nuke them in tandem with your gunner, and then yeeting yourself out seems to be the best approach so far for the Dervish. 
And just quickly guys, when it comes to weaponry on the Dervish, personally I'm a DV21 Lotus nose cannon kind of guy, I've always been a rotary nose cannon user on all of my other ESFs, so it felt most natural to use it on the Dervish as well, especially for those hit and run style attacks on heavier targets. But I'll be honest, the star of the show when it comes to the Dervish's weaponry loadout has to be the DV Zat. This thing, as I said before, is essentially a sky halberd, and it shows. This thing will three-shot enemy ESFs, and it will destroy enemy ground vehicles should you get the right angle as well. So, learn to aim with the Zat, learn to lead. It will take a while, but I promise you, it's a brutal weapon that can easily swing an engagement in your favor should you place a couple of shots right, and it scares the hell out of enemy ESFs. So guys, with all that said, that is going to wrap up today's video talking about the Dervish and my experience in using it so far in the game. Uh, once again, I apologize if you guys were waiting for a fully fledged out guide relating to this vehicle. I just don't have the authority to speak on it in a way that I feel comfortable, so I hope this does suffice because I know a lot of you were looking forward to a Dervish video. If you guys are new to the channel and you enjoyed it, consider backing in the subscribe button while you backhand the hell out of that like button. It goes a long way to support the channel. And as always, guys, leave some feedback in the comments section down below. Hell, if you're an experienced dervish pilot, let me know what your thoughts are. You know, share some tips. Would love to see some uh, some expertise from all you guys down there as well. As always, guys, my social media links are linked in the description down below, even though the Twitch one may become slightly less relevant soon as I'm thinking about where we're going to be streaming for the long run. But uh, yeah, guys, as always, feel free to follow us on those social medias as well. It goes a long way. But as always, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.